Hello everyone, welcome to today's service. We'll be talking about shining through God's rebuilding. Sit back and I hope you enjoy today's service. We are a chosen generation All for to show is excellence All I require for life God has given me I know who I am We are a chosen generation All for to show is excellence all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm working at power. I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. I'm working in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Oh, 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 oh I know who I am. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Calls for to show is excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Calls for to show is excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. A love that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs kindness The kindness of a savior The hope of nations Savior, he can move on
Good morning, children. It's good to be with you again today. How was the praise worship? Did you enjoy it? I hope you danced and clapped and praised God. It is always good to praise the Lord. The Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So hope you enjoy the praise worship and you worship God with all that that is in you. Good. You're welcome again to another Sunday service. I hope you're excited. Okay, today we're going to be talking about shining through godly living. But before we go right in, let's say a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you glory. We honor you. We thank you for another beautiful day, another beautiful morning. We thank you, Father King of Glory, for making this making it possible for us to come together today as children of the Most High God. We thank you for each and every one of us. We thank you for Restoration as Hamilton. We thank you for the apple of God's eyes. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our, our teachers. We thank you for our siblings, our brothers and sisters. Father, we thank you for every good and perfect thing that you're doing in our lives. Father, Lord, even as we go into your word this morning, Father, please go with us. Father, we pray for your knowledge. We pray for your wisdom. We pray, Father, King of glory, that you will teach us yourself. We pray, Lord, Father, King of glory, for your inspiration. Father, Lord, even as we're going to be learning about shining through godly living, Father, we pray, King of glory, that we will not be just hearers, O Lord, but we will be doers of your word, O Lord. We pray that, Lord, you would help us, O Lord, to live a godly life. You will help us to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, our Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We appreciate you, our God. Be thou exalted, be glorified, and be magnified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Nice to have you, children. Nice to be here today. So like I said, we're going to be talking about shining through godly living. What is godly living? What is it to shine? When we shine, we cannot be hidden. Something that is shining, everybody can see it, right? So it means that when we live a godly life, we shine. The glory of God shines through us. People see us and they're attracted to us because we carry the light of the Lord. We cannot be hidden. The Bible says that we are like a city that is on a hill that cannot be hidden. So when we live a godly life, we shine bright like the sun. Let's get right into it. So our memory verse for today is from the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 12. Again, our memory verse is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. And it says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present world. I would like to read that from the International Children's Bible. Let's see what it says. That is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. Now I'm reading from the International Children's Bible. And it says, it teaches us not to live against God and not to do evil things that the world wants us to do. That grace that teaches us to live in the present age in a wise and right way, a way that shows that we serve God. Wow. I would like to read that again. Do you have your Bibles with me? With you rather? Let's read it together. It's our memory verse after all. Whatever Bible translation that you have, that's good. Let's read it again. Book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 12. It says, it teaches us not to live against God and not to do the evil things the world wants us to do. The grace that teaches us to live in the present age in a wise and right way, a way that shows that we serve God. Wow, isn't that amazing? So when we live a godly life, we deny every worldly desires. We live sensibly. We live righteously. And we live godly. To live godly, once again, is to live sensibly, to live righteously, and to deny every worldly desire. So, our Bible text is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, 
verse 36 to 51. I would like to read that with you. Once again, go into your Bible with me and let's read together. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, reading from verse 36 to 51. Are you there? Okay, let's read together. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. His followers came to him and said, Explain to us the meaning of the story about the weeds in the field. Jesus answered, The man who planted the good seeds in the field is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seeds are all God's children in the kingdom. The weeds are those people who belong to the evil one. And the enemy who planted the bad seed is the devil. The harvest time is the end of age, and the workers who gather are God's angels. Verse 40. The weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire. It will be this way at the end of age. The Son of Man will send out his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom. All who cause sin and all who do evil. The angels will throw them in the blazing furnace. There the people will cry and grind their teeth with pain. Verse 40, 43. Then the good people will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let those with ears use them and listen. Verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, guide, treasure hidden in a field. One day a man found the treasure and then he hid it back in the field. The man was very happy to find the treasure. He went and sold everything he owned to buy that field. Also, that's verse 45, also the kingdom of heaven is like a man looking for fine pearls. One day he found a very valuable pearl. The man went and sold everything that he had to buy that pearl. Verse 47, also the kingdom of heaven is a net that was put in the lake. The net caught many different kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled the net to shore. They sat down and put all the good fish in the baskets. Then they threw away the bad fish. It will be this way at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil people from the good people. The angels will throw the evil people in the blazing furnace. In that place, People will cry and grind their teeth with pain. Jesus asked his followers, Do you understand all this saying? They answered, Yes, we understand. So this, this was after Jesus told a couple of parables to people. And then his disciples came back to him to ask for the meaning of these parables. And he was explaining to them about the kingdom of God in that last day when God comes back to take his people, to take children who have lived a godly life, to take children who have lived a righteous life. I particularly like verse, verse 43. He says, then the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. So for us to be accepted into the kingdom of God, for us to be able to join Jesus at the end of time in the kingdom of God, in paradise, where we hear that everything is beautiful. We have to live a godly life here on earth, here in the world. We need to live a godly life so that we can be with Jesus Christ in his kingdom at the last day. And that is why our lesson today tells us that we would shine bright when we live a life of godliness. Jesus Christ already came into this world to save us from our sins so that we can enjoy his kingdom with him like he told in, his, in the parable. As children of God, we shine when we live a godly life. Like our memory verse said to us and encourages us that we should live a life of self-control. What does it mean to live a life of self-control? This means that we have to live a humble life a life that, that does the right thing at the right time, that always does what is right, that always does what is good. Yeah? How can we do this? We have the help of Jesus Christ. 
And we can, we also do this when we live a humble life. When we, we, we live a life that we acknowledge that we are human beings. And sometimes we sin, sometimes we do things that we're not supposed to do. But we acknowledge this and we ask God for forgiveness. We confess our sins so that our life will be a righteous one. So if you ask me, what is godly living? Like I said, God created us in his image and he expects us as his children to live a life of purity, a righteous life, right? The same way that Jesus Christ lived a holy life, a life of righteousness, he expects us as, as his children that are created in the image of God to do the same. God already sent his son Jesus Christ to this world to die for our sins and to destroy the works of the devil. So we have power in the name of Jesus. We have power in Christ to help us to live a life of godliness, a life that honors God. By honoring God, what do we mean? It means that we respect God. We fear him as the almighty God. Not the scary fear, right? It is that fear that, it li that lives in us, that makes us obey God, that makes us want to do everything that he has asked us to do. A life that obeys his commandments. And the Bible tells us that God is holy and he cannot behold sin. But we want God to always be with us, to always be able to, to, be able to look at us at every point in time, you know? The eyes of the Lord is upon his own. He watches and cares for us. We don't want to miss that, do we? So, if you would say with me that I am a child of God, I know it, I live it, and I love it. We are called to live in a godly way, right? And for us to be able to live in godliness, we need to reject the worldly lust. We need to reject the things of this world. How do we reject worldly lust? We have to be careful, especially to what we expose ourselves to. There's too many things on the internet that we're not supposed to watch or listen to. We should be careful. We don't want things that will corrupt our minds. So for us to live a godly life, our Father in heaven, that is true when we as children act in resemblance of him. When we resemble him in what we do, in how we act, we are created in his image anyway. And therefore he expects us to live a life of godliness like he does. So like I was saying, how can we live a godly life? We should be careful what we expose ourselves to. We should be careful the company we keep. When we see people that are doing things that are not good, we need to be careful and not associate with those people. We should be careful with what we watch on the internet. We should be careful with what we say and how, what we do. We should constantly seek God and follow his commandment. You know, some of us, we spend so much time on the internet watching things that really don't add much to us. They don't really add any value to us. As a matter of fact, they corrupt our minds. But we cannot spend that much time on uh, that much time reading our Bibles. That's not so good. So, as godly children, we should be careful what we expose ourselves to. What is godly living? To live a godly life, it starts with Christ. And I would like to let I would like to I would like us to read um, 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 3 to 8. Again, I hope you still have your Bible with you. Pick it up because we're going to read together. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. Verse 3. Jesus has the power of God. His power has given us everything we need to live and serve God. We have these things because we know him. Jesus called us by his glory and goodness. Through his glory, goodness. Through his glory and goodness, 
He gave us the very great and rich gift He promised us. And with those gifts, you can share God's nature, which is godly living. And so to the world, and so the world will not ruin you with its evil desires. We talked about worldly lust. That is it. Evil desires that is present in this present world that we live in. But when we live a life of godliness, when Jesus Christ is in us, it gives us that strength to live because we are called by his glory. And through his glory and goodness, he has given us great and rich gifts. He has given us strength. And those gifts help us to share in God's nature. And that is godliness, right? And so, to the, and so the world will not be able to ruin us with its evil desires. The world will not be able to contaminate us. So godly living starts with Christ. Chapter, um, verse 5 says, Because you have these blessings, you should try as much as you can to add these things to your lives. It means that in every area of our lives, in all that we do, we should add everything that we have been we have been taught. We should walk in holiness. Add these things to your life. And what are these things? To your faith, add goodness. And to your goodness, add knowledge. To your knowledge, add self-control. We already talked about that, right? That godly living is living a self-controlled life. And to your self-control, add the ability to hold on, to persevere. And to your ability to hold on, add the service of God. And to the service of God, add kindness for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And to your kindness, add love. If all these things are in you and are growing, then they will help you never to be useless. They will help your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and make your life better. Make your life godly. So, how do we live a godly life? In what ways do we live a godly life? What is godly living? It is by seeking the knowledge of God. How do we seek the knowledge of God? It is by reading the word of God. What is the word of God? If you ask me, I know you know it. The word of God is our Bible. Godly living means that we live a life of thanksgiving. We live a life that is always thankful. No matter what we're going through, no matter what situation we are in, when we live a life of godliness, we are still thankful, right? And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 tells us that we should always be happy and never stop praying. In all things, give thanks to God. To live a godly life, we are to be led, led by the Holy Spirit of God. You know that still small voice that comes to your mind every time? That tells you to do what is right at all times. That directs you in the right way and right path. That is the Holy Spirit. Listen to it. There's another voice that is always loud. That is, is trying to convince us to do things that are not good. That is the voice of the enemy. No, do not follow that voice. Let us be led by the Holy Spirit. Let us always listen to the Holy Spirit of God. Pray persistently. As we read our Bible daily and all the time, we're also to pray persistently. So going on, how do we live a godly life? I think we said that before. We follow the examples of Jesus Christ. We do as Christ does. We live a life of Christ. We should always 
acknowledge our faults. We read that before. Acknowledge our sins and repent of them. We should read our Bible and not just reading it. We should do what it says. Let us practice what we preach. We can't just be telling people to do good. We also are supposed to do that. So if you ask me, you want me to read, live a godly life or we are to live a godly life. What are the rewards of living a godly life? We have the evidence of God's fruitfulness in our lives. The Bible tells us that God is a rewarder of those, of those who diligently seek him. Those who diligently do what he tells them to do. He's a rewarder. And how does he reward us? We are fruitful in all that we do. And there is the evidence of it in our lives. We achieve excellence in all that we do. Psalm 1 verse 3 says that we are like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And our leaves are always green and in season at all times. And we bring out fruit in season, in every season. Rewards of a godly life is that we are contented. We don't feel like we lack anything. We are sufficient with God, what God has given us. There's, we have that contentment, that sufficiency in our God. Godly living helps us fulfill God's purpose for our life. We enjoy the love of God. The eternal life is ours. We are not thrown into the fiery furnace where people are crying and grinding their teeth in pain. But we enjoy an eternal life with Christ Jesus. What are the applications of godly living? By always doing what is right, by always walking in God's favor, by always trusting God and knowing that His grace is sufficient for us and that God has provided all that we need. Trusting Him and holding on to Him, knowing that we can press on, even as we lay hold of that which Christ lay hold of. Jesus Christ is the only one that can help us. He's always at the door of our hearts, knocking, waiting for us to open the door unto Him so that he can come in and dine with us and live with us and fellowship with us and we fellowship with him. How do we allow Jesus in? By accepting him as our Lord and personal savior. Accepting Jesus as our Lord and personal savior is the invitation we have to a life of godliness. So today, my dear children, let us accept Christ and let us start living a life of godliness. So in conclusion, as children of God, for us to be able to live a life of godliness, we must be caught and refined. And what does that mean? It goes back to us living a self-controlled life, a quiet life, a life of holiness, a refined life, a pure one, that is pruned and molded, molded so that we are fit for the master's work. Finally, let us, I'm going to leave us with 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. That tells us about the different vessels that are in the house of the Lord. He says, in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also vessels of clay and of wood some of honor and some of some for dishonor therefore if anyone cleanses himself that is by living a godly life he will be a vessel of honor sanctified and useful for the master and prepared for every good word so children let's go into the world knowing that we might live in this world but we are not of this world and therefore we will live a life of godliness a life that shines bright 
a life that draws people to God, a life that tells people that we are children of Jesus Christ. We are Christians, followers of Christ. So children, thank you. And I want us to go and continue to live a life of godliness. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed today's service and have a blessed week.